There's a couple of things happening in the XRP community right now that you need to be made aware of if you're an XRP holder. These two things are surely easily described as strange or ununderstandable. In all seriousness, it's absolutely mind-blowing, absolutely crazy, and I was shocked the moment that I saw this. So to make it simple, here's our first subject. Stuart Aldorty over at Ripple stated this, Gary Gensler's latest Wall Street Journal commentary proves that the SEC's priority is to protect its turf at the expense of the 40 million plus Americans in the crypto economy. I responded, explaining how his agency's actions are actually leaving consumers holding the bag. To quickly read it out, in SEC treats crypto like the rest of capital markets, which was Gary Gensler's op-ed uh, a little while ago. The SEC commissioner or SEC chairman Gary Gensler appoints the SEC as the cop on the beat for crypto. Mr. Gensler is pushing aside his fellow regulators and front-running President Biden's executive order, which directed agencies to collaborate on establishing clear regulatory framework for crypto. Mr. Gensler writes that whether a car runs on gas or electricity, you still need a seatbelt. No one disputes that, but electric cars don't need gas. And in his analogy, it is gas that the SEC is selling. Mr. Gensler looks to punish anyone who isn't buying it. And the SEC's shakedown of BlockFi led to a mess. BlockFi ended up on the auction block and the other two companies with similar businesses went belly up. Consumers weren't protected, they were left holding the bag. What we need is regulatory clarity for crypto. Not the SEC swinging its billy club to protect its turf at the expense of more than 40 million Americans in the crypto economy. From Stuart Aldroti over at Ripple. Now, many have obviously responded, one of those people being James Fillon, who said, Aldroti dismount, Aldroti admonishes, that's a, what a word, Gary Gensler, quote, what we need is regulatory clarity for crypto, not the SEC swinging its billy club to protect uh, other people. Rightfully so, there's a ton of freaking memes out here, you know, below, because the point is quite clear. Gary Gensler's approach of things is, indeed, keeping the SEC safe and keeping the SEC having a quote-unquote good name, you know. In theory, if anything that's remotely a threat, if you just really get rid of anything, regardless of how much people lose in terms of money because of what you did, at least there weren't more scams, so to speak. In a literal example, right? Let's say we take, for example, Ripple. If now Ripple turns out to lose the lawsuit, for example, the SEC has a great $1.3 billion victory. They've gotten rid of a very mal, let's call it malicious crypto company. And again, they won $1.3 billion for the people. Yeah. But in all seriousness, how much did the actual investors, which the SEC is supposed to protect, lose? That's what happened in the library case with all the companies, uh, uh, or sorry, with the BlockFi case and all the companies, uh, I guess, around it. They all lost, the people. And even though the SEC can shake it out as a victory, the people lost, which is against their own narrative. There's a little bit more to share with that, though. Take a look again, right? We have that op-ed from the SEC. And in this, it's true as well that at least a billion dollars has been lost to crypto fraud in 2021. However, this pales in comparison to more than $15 billion lost overnight by investors when the SEC brought a $1.3 billion non-fraud lawsuit against enterprise blockchain company Ripple Labs when the news dropped. Exchanges stopped trading XRP currency. We all talked about it before, right, with, uh, with Rosalind Layden as a response to the Gary Gensler op-ed, which again had to be changed partially we'll talk about it in just a second but jeremy hogan also had this to say one billion dollars lost due to crypto fraud in 2021 a lot of money but then 15 billion dollars lost due to the sec versus ripple lawsuit who is the sec protecting here again um regarding the what i just said about you know we'll talk about it later i'm not sure this is the right account but <sighs> wait a minute wasn't this that individual Am I am I spelling it wrong, guys? Let me let me quickly take a little look. Ooh, okay, good. Whew, had a little scared attack right there because I spelled it wrong. You know, Roslyn, I thought it was Rosalyn or something. But yeah, apparently, this is going around in the XP community as well. She had to revise her article regarding Gary Gensler, right? She just wrote that previous response to Gary Gensler's op-ed, which Forbes took down. And now apparently she had to revise it. Not sure if she's done with that even. I just tried to refresh the um Gary Gensler page, you can see it in the URL, hopefully right there over on the top. Rosslyn Layden, 2022, 
8 to 25 Garen Gensler resign, which was the title. It's not under the same title. Potentially, however, we can still find it under her author name. Let me quickly try to take away everything behind her author uh, symbol. There we go. Okay, so we have a different title on the matter. Uh, I guess we have this one as the newest one. Gensler says crypto treated just like the market. 200 SEC lawsuits say otherwise. So she changed it up a little bit. This just came out earlier yesterday somewhere. And it's most likely just a smaller view of, um, of, of what we had earlier. Sorry, guys. A more, I'm going to say obscure or, or, or changed manner. Maybe she can't call for a, a person like this, a chairman like this to resign. In her opinion piece, though, in her article, she mostly just talks about how the SEC is not a bad entity. You know, nobody's saying that crypto is just pure fun. But in the way in which they've been doing things with other lawsuits, are they really doing it the best way? Are they really doing a good job? Eh. Or more importantly, are they treating crypto just like traditional markets? And that's a good question. Because we'd like to say, well, you're definitely not treating them the same. And he likes to say, well, we surely treat them the same, which is wrong. According to us, our own opinion. Don't take me down, YouTube. Now, before we move on, I gotta quickly say this, guys. Check out my ten thousand dollar giveaway. Only nine more days to go. If you haven't checked it out yet, just check it out. That's all I'm saying. A link is down below. Ten thousand dollars on the line. Ten people will win money. Check it out. That's it. Our second part here. I'm gonna try explain the basics of everything that's going on, but I think I'm gonna need a second episode to really dive deep into everything happening because the story is rather long and a rather tedious one. There's Brad Gollinghouse, eighteen hours ago, who came out with this tweet can't comment on the validity of the slew of allegations in here, but it can unequivocally, unequivocally, whatever, say that I have never met or spoken to, much less invested in Kyle Roche. And again, you can take a little bit of a look right here. It's pretty interesting, all right? Let me quickly go to the best view for you guys. It's awful, but it will do. Before Kyle Roche founded Roche Friedman and made a pact with Ava Labs, he was a relatively lowly associate at the law firm Boyce Sheila Flexner. They were representing Ripple, who were defending a lawsuit claiming their XRP token was an illegal security. According to Kyle, he proposed to their CEO, Brad Gollinghouse, that he create, hmm, suspicious, a new law firm that would specialize in suing others in crypto using exactly the same kinds of tactics that were being used against Ripple. Kyle asked that Brad Garlinghouse, or Bad at least, become his angel investor, and curiously, Brad agreed. One might have expected he would want to see less of this kind of litigation across the industry. So, to me, this is rather funny, because instantly, when I read this, I thought either this is just some garbage story that somebody made up for fun. Apparently, though, that's not how this works. It's on crypto leaks, and people take this rather far, you know? People look at this information as if it's just sent by some extreme insider, and Brad was very serious when he commented about it. Jeremy also Hogan also said this, it would be completely unethical for a law firm to have a non-lawyer investor, because that's obviously biased. So fake news, unless Mr. Roche doesn't care about his law license. But of course, a intellectual like myself <laughs> had a different opinion on the matter. He probably talked to uh, B. Garlinghouse underscore real one <laughs> on some forum and thought it was you investing a crazy amount of money into his company. Because that is crazy. And of course, guys, this story is not so small. That's why I'm saying we might need another episode entirely dedicated to this. It goes pretty wild. So, DAI said, I'm hearing ETHgate until the very end. It's almost like Garlinghouse part was just thrown in at the end as a distraction, with no backup evidence. This is an opportunity for Garlinghouse. There are times when you have to come out swinging, and this is one of them, you know? Obviously, people were quick to investigate crypto leaks to kind of find out a couple of flaws as to what is happening with their articles. I personally did not take it too uh, seriously, one of the fun parts is well, I'm not sure if this is doctored at all. Somebody says that that specific post was actually promoted as well slash sponsored uh, a couple of earlier parts about, for example, Kyle Roche at Roche Friedman, the secret avalanche law firm. Here he explains how he can file a class action lawsuit against Solana on behalf of Ava Labs, leaving people none the wiser. Kyle Roche was true to his word, later class action with a, an article attached to it promoted. Oh, it goes so far, all this stuff. People are diving so freaking deep. I can spend hours on just hours and hours reading this stuff. Guys, make sure you press that like button if you're enjoying these videos or... Oh, we go again to the screensaver. There we go. All right. This looks like a big attack slash hippies on Ripple and Brad. 
Brad needs to unleash his lawyers on whoever wrote this stupid stuff. Release the hounds. And then uh, Calvin Crypto goes into go detective mode saying, Roche made a pact with Ava Labs. Ava Labs investors, A16Z, Three Arrows Capital, <laughs> not any more than not, Galaxy Digital, Dragonfly Capital Partners, good guys, by the way. I like those people. Uh, and Consensus Investor. Obviously, the whole ETH, you know, debacle, right? The whole ETH party. Let's move on. Digital asset investors also blushing as to this. Emin Gun Sitter said, oh, this is actually this one crazy. Oh, he's over at Ava Labs. That's why. I was like, why, why is he? I thought he had something because of the little, you know, triangle. But hey, how could anyone believe something so ridiculous as the conspiracy theory nonsense on crypto leaks? We would never engage in the unlawful, unethical, and just plain wrong behavior claimed in these self-serving videos and inflammatory article. Our tech and team speak for themselves. And so Hans said, the reason why people think this is credible is because of tweets like this. Maybe you should delete them. All right. He talked before about this is a monumental lawsuit against Tether based manipulation of cryptocurrency prices. Hmm. Seems pretty fair, pretty fair assessment. And he's referring to Kyle Roche there, who said, Today, Roche filed a class action lawsuit on behalf of those who own crypto against Tether and Bitfinex for manipulating the crypto market to create the largest bubble in history. Um, I don't think that's a bad lawsuit whatsoever. You know, it's a good allegation, I think. I personally think as well that that's certainly a debatable fact, something that a lot of people would agree with, that Tether manipulation is bad, so it should be found out to the core. I'm not sure exactly. Um, hmm, hmm, interesting. Then again, people are divided on this. Uh, they're going pretty crazy in the sense that this aged well, this whole debacle. Um, I guess I don't really care, to be honest with you. You know, I'm not sure what's true, what's wrong. At the end of the day, you know that a lot of people are biased in all this. Fat Man, the GOAT, said this. Are the videos fake? Are the videos fake? Or is Kyle Rose lying about the nature of his special arrangement with Ava Labs? I think some clarity and a detailed statement is in order here. So this is indeed very strange. You know, who exactly is the lying party here? Who exactly is doing the wrong thing? Guys, if you want to see it, I'd recommend checking out, um, you know, Crypto Leaks yourself to watch this video. I don't want to play it over on YouTube purely for the sake of what if it is indeed a fabrication or something of this sort. I don't want it to get copies tried. I don't want it to have any troubles over on YouTube for, you know, inciting some certain thing. Um, but you can just kind of see right here, you know, the SEC and the CFTC have no other magnets to go after because... Uh, IMA, you should know, you know, it's, 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 it's a strange video. Uh, there's been a lot of these fabrications in the past over on Twitter. We've covered before how a lot of those Tesla insiders were also faked, right? Where they uh, gave some fake speeches like this, for example, thinking maybe this is all an elaborate ruse, but I, I can't 1000% for certain say. All I know is that everybody in the XRP community is talking about this right now and that it's going absolutely wild, you know? A lot of, well, a lot of whistles are going off because of all these whistleblowers, reportedly. This is on Crypto Leaks website. Ava Labs, Avalanche, attacks Solana and Khan's SEC, an evil conspiracy with bought law firm Roche Friedman. In his rush to hurt competitors and distract regulators from his actions, Emin Gunsider is harming everyone in blockchain. Hey, their spy videos. This report shows extensive spy videos. All videos have been collected in accordance with applicable laws. Again, I'm not going to show those. Whistleblower appeal. With these disclosures, we aim to show people who are not crypto insiders what goes on behind the scenes. Do you want to be part of this movement? If you have any further information on the case and the different parties involved, become a whistleblower for crypto leaks right there on uh, their website slash whistleblowers. Damn. And join our movement, bringing honesty and integrity to the crypto community which is uh, interesting. Let's get control F here for a little second to find Brad or let's type in Garling. Huh? Before Kyle Roche founded Friedman. Okay. According to Kyle, he proposed to the CEO, Brad Garling house, for whatever reason, Brad invested in Kyle Roche and supported him to his current path. And it certainly didn't save him from the SEC. Ripple's current travails might be a bad omen for Eamon. Huh? Interesting. Huh? Okay, so again, I need to do a little bit more investigative work. If you guys have any insights on the matter as well, let me know. Or if this is any way, shape, or form even stupider than I'm, I'm, I'm making it out to be. I obviously saw this news when Brad Garling House tweeted it out 18 hours ago because I have every freaking notification on. But I didn't think it was actually such a big deal until I started to notice everybody in the crypto space going wild about it. And the fact that Ava Labs is also pretty in on the discussion too. But that is... Um that is still strange in every way, shape, or form. I still don't fully understand exactly why they're doing this, what the purpose of this is, why make up such a lie, what's the benefit here. 
But I guess the benefit, like always, can be monetary gain or popularity. You know, they're getting a lot of infamy through through going to this manner. John Deaton said, great example to not believe everything you read. I read this yesterday and said to myself, there's no way a high profile CEO of a $10, $15 billion fintech company expecting to IPO and go public in the next one to three years is going to bankroll a law firm to sue others in the same industry. It would be absolutely stupid in the brain. And I don't think Brad Gollinghouse is stupid in the brain. Again, personal opinion. I guess the easiest conclusion here to make is like, uh, like, like James says, you know, he says in a sarcastic manner, just because you read it in an article doesn't mean it's true. So, uh, you know, watch out for this type of stuff. Don't get manipulated too much. They're trying to manipulate you all the time. You guys all know it. But uh, you know what? One thing that I think is pretty cool is my $10,000 giveaway. Go ahead and check it out. If you don't want to check it out, though, who cares? Adios, amigos.